So today we're going to do some electrolysis. I've posted videos about the electrolysis process before and they come out like crap because I had a really piss poor camera. So now I'm going to do it with this camera which is a somewhat decent camera. It does alright. Um, and here's what you're going to need for your electrolysis. First and foremost a plastic bucket. No metal at all whatsoever. Can't use a metal bucket. Won't do it. You'll end up rotting a hole in it and that'll be bad. So then you need a target. In this case a uh, fellow detectorist in my hometown here has provided me with a enormous this thing's got to weigh two pounds. A gigantic horseshoe. That's a big creature right there. So anyway, um, don't know much about horses. I just know this is a horseshoe. And he wants me to electrolysize it, so I'm going to. So we've got a plastic bucket. We've got a target. You're going to need a sacrificial piece of steel. Okay? I've seen other videos and people say you use um, stainless steel. I've heard no, that's a bad idea. The reaction from whatever stainless steel is made out of, which is usually low carbon steel and uh, titanium, I believe. The electrical reaction on that produces a gas that's not good for you. I'm not sure if it's uh, poisonous or cancerous or gives you nasty hemorrhoids. I don't know what it does, but it's not supposed to be good for you. The other thing you're going to need is a catalyst. I've used two different things for a catalyst in my electrolysis and have, I've had equally good results with both. Uh, one of which that I'm going to use today is baking soda. The other thing you can use uh, if you don't have baking soda or if you choose not to, you can use table salt. Um, a healthy couple of... Now I've probably got a gallon and a half of water in here so I would use... I would use probably, I don't know, three tablespoons, heaping tablespoons of baking soda or equal amount in salt. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add the baking soda and stir it up. And you can see it's all the way dissolved in there. So now I'm going to set up uh, the last piece you need for this process is some form of 12 volt converter. Um, I've picked this one, which is from a laptop. And this one is... This one is 16 volt, 2.5 amps. Um, so we're going to connect up our power now. The other thing that's very important to remember that I have myself have screwed up in the past is your target has to be fully submerged in the fluid, in the water, okay? And your negative that I have here in black with an alligator clip goes to your target, okay? I've got that little metal scrap that I'm going to connect it to in the water here. I'm sorry you can't see it, but it's happening. And I'm just trying to dig through some rust and get a good connection. And then this one we're going to connect to our sacrificial piece of steel. We've got to good, get a good contact through the chrome right here. And being that this is a slightly bigger uh, transformer than anything else that is out there really, I'm using a 16 volt versus a 12, we get an immediate, immediate reaction you can see the bubbling um, of our sacrificial piece of metal. And what it's doing is it's creating... These bubbles you see here are hydrogen bubbles. You can't see the oxygen bubbles coming off of the sacrificial, I mean the, the horseshoe that's in there. But believe me, it's happening. They're both happening. Um, so there's our immediate reaction and normally I would have knocked off a lot of that rust and flaking stuff that was on the horseshoe with the wire brushes that I have but I wanted to show you the condition it was in at first 
without touching it, putting in the electrolysis, and seeing how it reacts and how it goes from here. Um, another good point to remember is that your sacrificial piece of metal and your target that you're trying to clean or electrolysize cannot touch. Um, basically, if they touch, it's going to cook your converter and not do anything you want it to do. So let's let this cook for a little while in the soup and see where we're at. I may have to leave it in overnight. I'm not sure yet. So here we are, about five minutes into it. And pretty soon, um, all these bubbles that are happening right in here are going to form a foam. Okay, a nasty, cruddy looking foam. And um, they're hydrogen bubbles. So when they do form that foam, one really cool thing I like to do is set them on fire. So here we are. <clears throat> it's about uh, half an hour later. It looks like uh, it's pretty murky, pretty nasty looking. So I know it's working. I know it's taking stuff off of that horseshoe. Uh, one thing I wanted to show you, though, see all the bubbles I was telling you about? Starting to get some bigger bubbles around that uh, sacrificial piece of steel. And I'm going to show you what happens when you use a lighter <clears throat> against those bubbles of hydrogen. Now, I already did it once and had to let it build up again because I thought it was so cool. I wanted to show you guys. So, I'm going to show you, and if it works out, you'll hear some interesting noises, so pay attention. Did you hear that? That was the pop of the hydrogen gases that's being released off of the positive side of this sacrificial piece of steel. Okay? And... Uh, coming off of the in, into these bubbles right here. Oh, excuse me. So I'm going to unplug it tonight and uh, we'll revisit tomorrow morning or tomorrow after work when we set it back up. I'll hit it with the wire brush real quick and see where we're at. Thanks for watching. Okay, it's been overnight <clears throat> to get the idea. I will take a disconnect from here. Pull it out of the soup. Damn, that sucker's heavy. I'm gonna hang it here. All right, we're going to let it dry off for a little bit. I'll come back to it and hit it with some wire brushes and stuff. See what we got. Typically, first I take a coarse brush and go after this sucker. <clears throat> then take a finer brush. This happens to be an old barbecue brush. And then with that. So I'll do that for a few and show you. So it's halfway through, gets you a little dirty, you might want to wear gloves, um, not for the OCD cleanly type of person, but then again, need is metal detecting, so we see a lot of this heavy scale, just flakes right off, you know. So we got it to this point here, and I've decided I'm going to put it back in the soup for a little while. First time around, I had it in like this, and the ground was clipped to here. This time, I'm going to flip it upside down and clip the ground somewhere on the edge over here or something like that. So I'm going to set it back up in here and give it some time. So here it is when we're done. Um, can't get all the rust without damaging the metal. You can see right in here where it's already started to pit a little bit. Um, you saw what it looked like before. The 
And those are obviously some sort of cleats for the mud or snow or ice. I'm not sure. I'm not a horse guy. Still got a nail in it. Left that in there. All the other holes came out nice and clean. And there it is. Not bad. You get yourself a good luck piece, buddy. There it is.